Welcome to Faith on Film with Isaac Hernandez and Holly McClure. Keeping you informed on faith and family entertainment. Hello and welcome to this episode of Faith on Film. Boy, do we have a jam-packed show for you today. You see, recently we were able to attend the International Christian Film and Music Festival in Orlando, or ICFF. Uh, And because of that, we were able to have these wonderful interviews, these wonderful conversations with some great Christian filmmakers that were in attendance. Well, actually... Holly got to have those conversations. I was way too busy behind the scenes. But nonetheless, I know that you're going to enjoy these conversations that she had with these Christian filmmakers that were in attendance. Uh, Now, if you are not too familiar with ICFF or the International Christian Film and Music Festival, and perhaps you want to attend next year or you have a film that you might want to submit, simply go to internationalcff.com. That's internationalcff.com. And there you will get all the information you need. Well, let me not take up any more of your time. Let's go right straight to these wonderful interviews that Holly had. First of all, guys, apologize. I've been talking so much, I don't have a voice anymore. So, and for me, that's crucial, you know. Hey, I've got with me the director, writer, and producer of a movie, Grace by Night. They're going to tell us all about it. Sorry, guys. Let's use your good voices and you tell us. <laughs> yeah, our film is uh, called Grace by Night. Um, it's a, a, a dramatic sport film, and uh, it's about a, a guy who actually is a crisis hotline responder, and he goes out on calls. He's trying to deal with the uh, tragedy that he's had in his own life. And and get through his grief by helping others. What ends up happening is the people he goes on calls for help him. He meets a teenager uh, who's having a rough home life. And it's kind of the story of how the two of them come together through the sport of wrestling and heal each other. So it's a redemption story. Uh, got kind of the vibe of like Rocky or the blind side, I think. What do you think? Is that a good way to describe yeah, it? I definitely think it is. I think that, you know, it's it's inspirational. Um, it brings a lot of hope to people, but it's not afraid to talk about, you know, the subjects that we are all going through and our own, you know, lives and so I'm really excited to share it with people to inspire them but also to open up a new path and a new concept for what a Christian film can be okay what is the new concept what is the new thing because why is this different from the stories before I think that it is new in the way that we aren't afraid about talking about the the hard topics it's a little grittier Um, you know we we really believe in in order to have the light shine you have to show the darkness not glamorize it not glorify it but if you don't show where someone started then where they end up doesn't mean as much so um, you know in doing those in very realistic situations that people encounter in their everyday lives not necessarily just in the church or in their homes but out on the streets as well yeah, I think I'll I add to that. Yeah, I think taking on, like she said, the hard topics, the stuff that other people know are happening in the world, but they're not necessarily putting it into faith films, um, you know, like the teen depression and mental health issues, uh, but doing it in a way that is hopeful and showing where hope can be found. Um, yeah. I like the fact that you said showing what that came from and where they're going to. My biggest complaint with a lot of Christian films is because everyone's afraid to do that extra thing. If you don't show where they were, how do you show them redeemed? If you don't show what they came out of, then why was it so dramatic? Why did they just stay there? You have to show something in their life that went, I got to change or I'm not going to make it. That's it. Amen. Yeah, I I think I think that's what it's about. Um, You know, there's a lot of people who've been suffering uh, with with mental health issues, and I think I think the pandemic brought that out even more. Um, and I think we can't be afraid to talk about those things. You know, Christ told stories to the people who were hurting. He told stories about people who were hurting, the prostitutes, the criminals, you know, the guy on the cross next to him. Those were not people who were in a great spot, but through his stories to them and helping them, he got them out of those situations. So let's let's not just um, preach to the choir. Let's try to evangelize a little bit in the stories we tell. That's kind of our, our mission. Uh, is this your first film? And, and how hard is it for other future filmmakers out there to get that film even seen? Because that seems to be, there seems to be a lot of movies being made, but it's getting people to see it. That's the other thing. Yeah, I think you're totally right. Uh, I think, uh, number one, it, it's very difficult to uh, to make a film for sure. That's something where you really got to pound the pavement, believe in it uh, long enough, pray for uh, God's help to give you the energy you need to get through that part. But once the, I think the work does speak for itself. I think that if you got the right crew together, you know, you followed God's 
lead and wrote the right scripts and all that. I think that the the good work does stand out, and the distributors will take notice of that, um, especially if you're doing new things. I, and that's my other thing. You know, don't be afraid to go outside of the box a little bit because if there's everyone's going this way, go that way, and it might have a better chance of getting distribution because it's different. That's my take on it. Yeah, I agree, and I just I really like to encourage people who maybe are setting out on their first film to use it as a learning experience, but also to not, you know, make themselves feel too small, to have big dreams, to have those conversations, and to be bold in what they're telling their story about. Um, cinematography is really important. Making sure you have the right crew, making sure that you're putting your acting on point with your talent. Um, so making the right decisions on who you're working with and uh, how you're getting it out there, I think, is kind of follows based off of who you work with in the beginning. Here is a beautiful woman who is not only beautiful inside and out, but she is an amazing woman in the industry, and she's doing a lot to help productions and movies get made. And with me is... Amber Buto. Amber Buto is in where? Houston, Texas. And you have an amazing studio, don't you? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah. We opened this year, and um, it's called For the One Studio. It's four studios under one roof, and um, it's been a crazy fun journey. And what made you start to do a studio? What made you think that you needed that outside of Houston? Well, I tease all the time, and I say, do you want the long or the short? The long is I have no idea what I'm doing. The short is God. Right? I mean... <laughs> but it's been successful, so God must have it liked has. it. It's been really great. And, you know, I am a firm believer of creating space for um, us to feel super respected and comfortable and honored in the space to create what God has put in us in creativity and create from His creation. And in doing that, um, we, we needed spaces that fostered that culture and that's the kind of culture that we have at for the one studio it's like i tease all the time and i say we really wanted to create a space that you didn't want to leave from you know? <laughs> like you just wanted to stay there and create when you walk the door and that's what we get a lot and that's that's been cool to watch the lord work in that and to see all of his creatives that he's brought through and inspired their creativity um through the space so you're one of a few women who own a production studio. I yes. mean, you own a studio. There's only a few of you out there. Yes, that's so true. And I did not know that when I got into it. <laughs> no, but I, I think it's great. And I have been connected with a lot of other strong women in the industry um, that I have adored and appreciate. And it is a predominantly man's world. But hey, look out. We're stepping up. The women are stepping up. The women are stepping up, that's yeah. for sure. Have we seen any movies that you produced yet, or are you making shows? Or yeah, so um, from the studio, we do a couple of live television shows. Father Cedric's one of those that um, you can see. Um, we do a lot of um, ad work. So this last year at the NBA dunk contest, we had the, they launched, Wilson launched a 3D ball that was shot in our studio. Uh, so we have all kinds of things that are shot there. I was on a feature film called The Life of Me this last summer. It's supposed to come out uh, this year at some time, uh, so you'll be on the lookout for that. We have a website, for the one studio.com and that's the number four, the word the, the number one, studio.com. Um, but all social medias. You know, we're Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok. You know, I have a really sweet young team that works at the studio with me, and they do all of that. Thank you. But one of the really cool things that we do from the studio is we have a podcast, a video podcast, and we actually had Isaac on, who we adore. Yes. Um, and we interview people from the industry, everybody from the entertainment industry, kind of how did you get into it, how did you get started in it, and give tips and tricks and everything else how to get into it in a healthy way to encourage others that want to get into the industry to hear inspirational stories of how they how others got into it so um, you can go to YouTube and follow us there and subscribe to our channel for the one studio channel uh, it, and we just launched in February we're super excited about that so 
Yeah. That answers a lot of questions. Plus, it's fun to have a guest on. Okay. Anything we can look for or see Club coming up that you're working on? Yes. You can talk about it. Yes, I can give a generality of it. So there's a documentary that we're working on. Well, actually, we have features and documentaries, but there's a documentary that this year for, that we're going to go shoot in Uganda. We actually have a crew there now in Uganda. Well, I want to go. So, yeah, and really excited to see what the Lord's going to do through this amazing story. It's a, it is an incredible story. So that that's in the works right now um, that we're working on. And then we have a feature film. Uh, that we're really excited about. I can't talk much about that because that's under wraps, but um, there, that's a big feature that's coming. So, Anyone in the biz knows you can't talk about most of the things you're working on. <laughs> that's just the nature of the business, but at least you can check out their website. You can check out the podcast with Amber and her team and see what they're doing. And when you get those, get ready to get out come back on. And we'll absolutely. We'll talk about them, okay? Yes, absolutely. I would love to. And uh, it's been such a pleasure. I adore you. This has been fantastic. So precious. You're best buds. I yes. love this girl. I love yes. this lady. I'm telling you, she. I love that a woman is in the business, and a woman is in the business to make change and to do it in a godly, positive way. And that's what you're doing. Thank oh, you. thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I only wish I had a voice to scream it, but that's the best I can do. Thanks, Amber. <laughs> With me is Benjamin, and for many, actually he has a long last name, I'll let him pronounce it. Many of you may recognize him as the pastor in God's Not Dead, and guess what? He's a pastor in the movie Senior Year, and here he is on the front of it. Benjamin, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. You say your last name. Onyango. Onyango. Yes. You got it. Yes. That's not that hard, Benjamin Onyango. All right, tell how long you started. Uh, yeah, yeah. I started in 1999 when I, I graduated in 1992 and then I said, you know what, I'm going to LA to work in movies. 95 is when I started, did a lot of uh, background stuff and then, and then one day I got lucky and uh, I started doing, uh, you know, speaking roles and of course uh, I did a lot of a bunch of movies and all that stuff and then after I did God's Not Dead the first one he approached me the director that to be in his movie freshman year to play a pastor and I accepted it and, and here we are in the sequel okay I know you've been in other films and you've been an actor but God's Not Dead kind of launched you yes. in the Christian world. Into the Christian world. That is so true. Because it's so funny that after I did uh, God's Not Dead, uh, the first one and the second one, and then uh, Jude Johnson also uh, contacted me to be in Freshman Year, another faith-based movie. And then uh, and then four other people. It's like total, uh, Beautifully Broken was one of my biggest ones as a lead actor in a Christian film and Heavenly Deposit, another one. It's like, wow, God, is this what you want me to do now? <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm doing a faith-based movie and I've done, it's like, it's like I haven't done anything else since then. I've done like eight movies and all of them faith-based. But then God keeps bringing you more roles. Yes. So yeah, exactly. I was like, yeah, okay, God looks like this is what the line you want me to take in this acting, in my acting career, I accept it. And, yeah. yeah. Did you ever dream you'd be doing Christian films? Uh, and, um, yes, when I was growing up, you know, I, I've always wanted, loved film. And when I came to America, went to school, and then I said, okay, now I'm going to make my way. After I graduated in 1992, I was like, I'm going to Hollywood. And I was an uh, an extra for a very long time, and then when I when I finally got my first speaking role in the X Files, everything started from there. And I've done like about 40, 45 movies. Wow. And it's been it's been great. It's been great. I thank God. So where are we gonna see Senior Year? Where are we gonna Se see this? Senior Senior Year? We're gonna see it right now. Uh, we've we've already watched it today. Uh, for the first time, that's the first time they're launching it to any to, uh, any way in the world, and and also Jude Johnson is gonna they're gonna take it to uh, uh, from the film festivals they're gonna go to theaters, and they're gonna uh, launch it in churches, 
and then after that it's gonna go probably on Netflix uh, we don't know for sure but yeah the streaming services will be the last thing and what does God have next for you I hope he has something big again for me I I, I love faith-based movies because it was prophesied of me my life by John Bever way back then that I'm gonna up affect the youth and in film and in entertainment and here it is happening John Bever? John Bever, wow. yes yes and now it's happening John. now it's happening you have a family? Are you married? yes I'm married yes I'm married with my wife and three old all the daughters one is 38 20 38 no, 39, 29, and 25. Yeah. Are they in L.A.? Or They're in L.A. Yeah, I left them there. Are they proud of you? They're very proud of me. Maybe star dad. <laughs> Thank Any you. handsome pastor, I got to say. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate you having me. Yes, senior year. With me is not only an amazing lady, but... Well, I have a little surprise to tell you, okay? But we're going to talk to her first about what she does. Melissa Anschutz. Melissa, welcome to Faith on Film. Thank you. And tell us where you're from and what you do for films. Well, I wear many hats. I am an actor. Um, I'm a producer with CDI Productions. And I'm the VP of Communications for BMG Global. Um, and what I'm really excited about is to tell you. Um, do you want to tell them or should I? You too. Okay. We um, at Encourage TV are now going to be sponsors of Faith on Film, and I cannot wait. Yay! It means I'm going to be on every month, and I'm going to celebrate what's new and happening at ETV, which is Encourage TV. So I get to be with my friend oh, and then talk to you all about all the fun things that we're going to be doing on Encourage. I just had to photobomb this interview. <laughs> Isaac! I'm, I'm so excited about this partnership that we're beginning with, uh, with Encourage TV. Of course, I've known you for a while, and I've known of your work as an actor, and uh, the movies you've been on, which are amazing. And I actually had you on the show, and I interviewed you, you a few years, a couple of years ago, maybe or so. But to create, to have this partnership, to me, is very exciting. We're very appreciative. I thank you. It so means much a lot to us. It, it really does. It'll help us to elevate the show a little bit. Just having you on elevates it, Aww. but being a partner elevates it even more. So. And it's our first sponsor, so we're very excited. Our first of hopefully many. <laughs> and we are so excited and encouraged to be TV to be your first sponsor. <laughs> I can't wait. It's a first, it's a first. Tell well, what you do. I, I'm, I'm going to go back to work. Thanks, Isaac. <laughs> so Encourage TV um, is a our channel um, uh, with BMG Global, and we provide films that have beautiful messages. Uh, it's faith-friendly, uh, family-friendly programming um, that we want to inspire audiences when they watch. And how can they find it? Well, um, you can go on, we have a YouTube channel, so you can go on YouTube and just search Encourage TV. It's free to subscribe, so you can just click the subscribe button and then look through all the films, watch the trailers first if you want to, and decide which one you want to watch or watch them all. That's even better. <laughs> Do you have original content? Are you guys producing movies and where are you getting your content from? No, we get our content from independent filmmakers um, that we talk to and um, watch their trailer, watch the link to their film, of course, and then um, our sales and acquisitions gentlemen decide whether or not we're going to take that on, whether or not it fits our mission. Melissa, what is what are you guys seeing the shift in trends right now in family entertainment, but also wholesome entertainment? Because I, I hear so many people more and more say, I turn on the TV, I can't find anything that doesn't have the woke message or woke themes in it. Is that in your network as well? Are you trying, I mean, I'm asking an honest question, are you trying to kind of steer away from that and offer something different? No, our, you know, our programming is designed so that you do not have to cover your child's eyes when you watch a film with them. Um, it's, it's very wholesome, but it's also very inspiring. Um, there are some redemptive films, you know, in our library, um, but I, I, I feel like our audiences should walk away with a very positive, very inspired feeling after they've watched our stories, and that's kind of our, our most important qualifier. I think that is what I love hearing. Is to inspire, you know, and that's what it should be. And they feel it's family friendly, so they don't have to worry about it. They don't have to worry about content. 
because these days that's a big concern. It is. <clears throat> And it happens, and you don't even know it. Sometimes you're watching, and you're like, oh, what, what just happened? Uh, with our programming, you won't have that. Um, it's it's in, called Encourage TV for a reason. It's, it's designed to encourage people. Okay, let's talk about what's coming out for you soon, like that we want to promote and talk about. So as an actress or as... As Bo. <laughs> let's talk about Bo. We have a uh, World War II true story called Silent Night in Algona uh, as a producer um, coming out. Um, I, as, and as an actor, actually, I, I have a part in that as well. Um, we're getting ready to shoot a 1920s film in the fall. Um, but for Encourage, we have several things. Um, God and Salsa is one that is coming out that's um, outstanding, and you all definitely want to see that. It's a beautiful, beautiful, heartfelt drama. God and Salsa? Yes, yes. Dancing. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> yes, yes, it's it's outstanding. So we have a few things that um, when I come on, I'll kind of roll them out slowly so that people can watch them and don't get overwhelmed on this interview. Okay, and we'll and we'll spread it out so you guys can share. That sounds perfect. And I am so grateful to be sponsoring your wonderful oh, program because you me. are fabulous. Love you guys. Thank you so love much. Love you back. Thank you. God bless. All right. With me are two guests who are going to talk about their film and what they're doing here. You guys introduce yourself. Hello, I'm George A. Johnson. And I'm Carrie Johnson. And what are you here at ICU at the conference for? Well, we're here to see all these amazing people. It's, uh, it's always like a family reunion when we come here. It's so great to see all of our friends and meet new friends. Um, but we're also here with the film Pursuit of Freedom, which was released in theaters last September and uh, just released on Pure Flix May 1st. May 1st. Okay, say again. Pursuit of Freedom. And what is it about? What's Pursuit of Oh, my goodness. It's based on a true story. Uh, it's the story of a woman who was sold into trafficking when her husband lost her in a card game. Yeah, and you would think this happened 100 years ago. This happened back around 2006. And so, yeah. Where did it happen? It happened in Ukraine. And um, so she was thrown into a cell, a dark cell, for three years. And to this day, she, we interviewed her, and she said she still doesn't know what any of the other girls looked like. They were all in this dark cell for three years. They only knew each other by voice. And their restroom was just a, a rusty coffee can. And this is how she lived for three years. And um, finally, she just became so ill that she was useless to them. So they threw her out on the street, literally out of a moving car, threw her in an alley, left her for dead. She woke up in a hospital, and she was befriended by this Christian nurse who ultimately led her to the Lord and then found out that she had three children who she hasn't seen for three years. They're no longer... At their home, they've been moved. They can't find them, so it becomes this miraculous search for these three missing children. Wow. Okay. What is it with actors, or is it documentary? It's with actors. Yes. Yes. Yep. So we've got uh, Jessica Colloian starring, and then Stelio Savante, Robert Amaya, who's here, Sharon Lanier, um, Mimi Sagadin, who's also here. Uh, just an incredible cast, an unbelievable cast. Okay. Where can people see it? Um, it's on Pure Flix. Yep, and I just found out it's also on YouTube, but with ads. Um, and then it's uh, you know iTunes. It's on, I think, uh, Amazon Voodoo, Prime. Amazon, mm -hmm. yeah. Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. pretty much everywhere. So did you guys go over there to film? We were going to. The plan was to shoot in Armenia, uh, but we shot during COVID, and so we couldn't travel. So we actually had to turn Indiana into Ukraine, Russia, and Armenia. No way. Yes, yes. So it was a trick. It was a, it was a, it was a job, but a, we love a challenge. Yeah. So, and it really turned out great. Yeah. Our sets and our locations in Indiana were fantastic. Yeah. You would think, you know, some of the parts you would think are actually done in Amsterdam, and it was just in our, you know, little town of Fort Wayne, Indiana. So it's amazing what you can do when God gives you the creativity and when he gives you the vision, and you just push through, and you just have to have grit in this industry, you know, just keep going. In and and we just didn't let COVID stop us. <laughs> so yeah, it, that's amazing yeah. too. It, yeah, it also helps that our executive producer Lonnie Norris, he and his wife, uh, own a construction company. They build homes, and so they were able to build a village 
the, this Armenian village that looks so authentic. It was incredible. They actually knew a lot of the people involved. They used to be missionaries in Russia, and they had met a lot of the people involved in the story. And he came to me with the story and said, we've, we've got to make this into a movie. And so we sat down, and he started telling me about the story, and I was like, this is absolutely a movie, yeah. Did she find her kids? I love this part. As a mom, you know, thinking about three years without your children, not knowing if they're dead or alive, it was, um, it just showed that her character was so true and so, so real, you know, and as a mom, you would do anything to get those kids, and so she just held on, really, for the sake of those children, and so I'm not going to tell any spoilers but her you know her determination was fabulous and um jessica did a fantastic job playing her part and and bringing it live you know and as a mom you just you're watching just hoping and praying and and really it's a modern day story of modern day miracles because god isn't just in the past he's present today and he's active and alive in our lives and it's just a great story about how god is a god of miracles so and i want to know the ending <laughs> i want to know does she get back Okay, did the husband I'll, get his? I'll it's tell you this. Oh, I wish I, I wish I could tell you, but I'll I'll tell you this. Um, just because the trailer does kind of allude to it, um, they do find the children. It it is it's a rough start. It's she went through some difficult things, but such a powerful, happy ending. It's it's an incredible story. I'll tell you this. They found them three years later. And the missionary who found them said they were like three starved dogs huddled in the corner, still wearing the same clothes from the night of the same abduction. No. Could yeah. you imagine yeah. how they, famished they were? They didn't grow. They they really, yeah, those poor children. Yeah, The, the yeah. missionary took them home to this church, and they fed them. And he said in just a few weeks, they shot up like six inches. And they had bought them new clothes, and suddenly they didn't fit anymore. So they had to get them new clothes again. And wow. It was, it, you'll have to Is see. Is that in the movie? Yeah. Actually, yeah, we didn't cover the the growth and all that. We should have, it, yeah. it, honestly, we should have gone miniseries because we could have made a ten hour movie out yeah. of this story. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I already want to know. I know. Okay, what happened after they get the husband? Yes. Know yes. Wow. Yeah, and it's you know a true story. No one can write stories like that but God. You know, God is a God of, of miracles, and and it's just good to have that hope. And it's really a story of hope. And on that note, it's a true story. It's not. I think we called it inspired by a true story, but it is, it's almost a documentary. Like, the people who experienced it saw it, and they said that's like 95% accurate, like everything that happened. Like, even the airplane, I won't say anything more than that, but the airplane scene at the end, we didn't know about that until we were interviewing people, and we're like, how is this possible? We, this is totally a movie. So all of it actually happened. Oh, I love that. Okay, once again, tell your names, tell the name of the movie, and where they can see it. George A. Johnson. And I'm Carrie Johnson. And it's Pursuit of Freedom, and it's available pretty much everywhere. Pure Flix is the latest one, yeah. Okay, guys, I want to see this movie. I bet you do, too. Thanks so much for coming. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for having us. Thanks. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show. It was a lot of fun uh, being out there at ICFF. Uh, and getting to talk to all these great filmmakers. Um, remember, if you don't know much about the uh, ICFF and you want to learn more, just go to internationalcff.com. That's internationalcff.com. There you will get all the information you need. Well, we have a lot more interviews that we did while we were there, so you will get those in some future shows. Until next week, take care. Write to us at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. Also, go to our YouTube channel, Faith on Film TV, and hit the subscribe button and the bell for notifications on our latest Faith on Film shows.